I quickly wanted to touch upon and follow up on the news regarding Watergate's closing. As I mentioned previously in the podcast per episode before, Watergate, the legendary club in Berlin, will unfortunately close at the end of the year. They are citing rising energy costs, rising costs and rents and all this malarkey. But from my naive, uninformed, dumb dumb point of view from the outside looking in, it does seem to be like a mixture of things all at once but predominantly it seems to be like a finger where they didn't really keep up with the times they weren't really addressing the concerns that a lot of punters myself included and other people on the internet which i'm going to show you had about the club and that effectively led to their very poor reputation they had one of the worst reputations in la berlin for club experiences despite being a legendary nightclub and i think it played it cashed up to them eventually they couldn't keep getting away with treating people like shit and eventually the customers voted with their feet and people stopped going and that eventually i think affected how the club is and how the club is future-wise so i just wanted to double check on google to see their reviews and to see if the reviews kind of summed up or marry some of the impressions that i've been having when i've been going there so let's actually get the review up on here courtesy of google of watergate and let's actually uh do it via newest and see what people are saying here so this is newest reviews we've got a five-star review here um this person says the italians who say they won't enter um, are absurd we arrived late and we even got a discounted our entry magnificent space two rooms and a bar we haven't tried yet that person loved it this person from seven hours ago said we were visiting berlin and wanted to experience a good party unfortunately we were rudely turned away at the door luckily berlin still has a decent clubs we treat you to bankruptcy <laughs> wow um i think this is one of the w worst things about berlin's door policy thing because they have the this really weird draconian and very personal door picking selection thing which is obviously one of their secret sources because without door picking i don't think people were going to wank over berlin clubs the way they do myself included we wank over the clubs there because they are very purposeful about how they do things they obviously take everything they do very seriously you you can basically be a professional bouncer over there in berlin and have that be your actual career um as opposed to here in the uk it's not really a thing it's mostly a security guard but security guards don't really door pick and shit so it's a whole different thing over there but if they didn't have door picking, I don't think people would give a shit because most of their clubs, you know, they are what they are. The door picking also is a negative because if you don't get in, you're obviously going to give the place a one star. But it's not really an accurate representation of the club experience because you didn't get in. So you don't know what it was like on the inside. So it kind of skews the way clubs are rated and looked at. Now, again, most people probably don't even check reviews. Most people just go and just check stuff for themselves with their own eyes and shit. But it does really probably hamper clubs when they do have door picking because if you don't get in what are you going to do when you go home to leave a google review or yelp review you're obviously going to give them a one star you know what i mean even though it doesn't really reflect your experience accurately because you didn't get inside another person said absolute crap shop well karma is a bitch friends now you can close your crap shop for financial reasons but the main thing was to turn people away at the door that could no longer surpass so some people are celebrating some people are actually celebrating that watergate is closed and it might, to be fair though to be fair because i've been turned away from watergate sometimes but you know based on my skin color it's obvious to know why i'd get turned away from watergate but from other people who aren't black and who aren't obviously you know let's say middle eastern looking or whatever or north african looking you have to be a real psycho not to get into burp to, to walk to gate because for the most part they let anybody else in as long as you're fucking not black or not brown you usually get in pretty easily so if you don't get in and you're white you're gonna take that really personally and you're gonna you're gonna fucking wave your karen flag you're gonna get your fucking loudspeaker and you're gonna shout from the rooftops how much of a fucking shitty club this is you're not you're not gonna be happy about it so I'm not surprised to see people really, really pissed off. Another person says here, the club is too selective at the entrance. Personally, I came to celebrate my bachelor party with 10 of my friends and we had to buy our tickets in advance and we came from far away. We were denied entry and received racist remarks from the manager at the door. I've been to the best clubs in the world, Ibiza, Marrakesh, Paris. Ibiza, Marrakesh and Paris are the best clubs in the world. They might be the best destinations though. I don't think they're the best clubs in the world. Um, and we were never denied entry. And Watergate, because we were Arab, you can't enter. Maybe you should consider your model and imagine your projection. And that person says, please build better club in the place. This is a shame to the capital. The club finally goes bankrupt. Look, people are happy. It's gone. 
Great location experience, the Berlin Techno. Me and my friend were asked and we spoke German and they promptly turned us away after paying for the event tickets. Don't even bother. Wow. A lot of bad reviews here. They, they didn't let us in even with tickets purchased. We were more than four people, well dressed and we knew what we were going to listen to. That's something as well that I've, I'm not a big fan of. If Berlin clubs want to do what they want to do, cool about selecting. But don't let people buy tickets online and then turn them away at the door. That is incredibly rude, incredibly dismissive, incredibly, it's just, it's just bad across the board. But I guess they want to kind of have their cake and eat it as well. You want to be able to take money ahead of time to gauge how many people are going to come, blah, 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 blah. But if you're going to do the whole like door picking thing, just make it cash on entry. That's it. Cash on entry only. That's it. Easy way to kind of get around everything. Um, let's scroll through. Another one says here, being an institution in Berlin, one would accept basic rules of social inclusion to be followed. But unfortunately, that was not the case. I'm a disabled DJ and was on the guest list along with 24 other people from our crew. What, 24 disabled people? Or is it 24 people? Because if it's 24 disabled people, then maybe <laughs> that's a lot of people to accommodate for. At first, it seemed like the club was accessible since they let me through a ramp near the entrance. They allowed all of us to enter and some of us even paid reduced event tickets. Only later did we find that there were free nights of free flights of stairs. Oh my God, this is horrible. Only later did we find that there were free flights of stairs to reach the dance floor. As a result, everyone, including those who had paid, left with me. The club's management dismissed us without even an apology. Accessibility should be a foundation of an inclusive world, but here we are still far from achieving that. It was a terrible experience and none of expected from such a famous club in Berlin. So why did they let them in? This is, yeah, this is, again, this is why no one should be sad Watergate is closing. Because they're such, they're run by such inept people. Why would they let somebody in that's, that's disabled knowing fully well that they don't have the accessibility needed to get the person to the dance floor? Why not tell them at the door, hey, unfortunately, this club hasn't got hasn't got the, you know, the facilities to accommodate you. So we'd probably just tell you to go somewhere else. You know what I mean? As opposed to take your money, let you come in and then you realize there's three flights of stairs to get to the fucking dance floor. That's fucking insane. Honestly, no one should be surprised that Watergate didn't work out. That fucking that that venue, that location, the fact that it didn't work out is a user error. I don't care what anyone says. The fact that Watergate didn't work out is more so a user error, the way it's run, as opposed to, oh, the rising cost, the rising cost. Fuck off the rising cost. Look at the location that you're at. Look at you. You're literally, this is like the the perfect location for a club in Berlin, you'd imagine. Look at where it's at, bro. Look at where it's at on the map. It's nearby the river. It's not too far from like, what's that, the trendy bit Neuklund. It's not too far from like Alexanderplatz, right? Which is, I think, somewhere around here. It's not too far from like Prenzlauer Berg. It's not too far from like Bergheim, which is on the other side. It's not too far from like club, what you call it, RSO, which is somewhere down here. It's literally in the middle, it's effectively. Like everyone can kind of get to it fairly easily. North, south, east, west, whatever. It's in a perfect location, especially transport wise and whatever it may be. And it's an iconic place. Everyone knows where it's at, near the fucking bridge, blah, 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 blah. So the fact that it's had to close, I think is more of a reflection on how badly it was run as opposed to this whole idea that oh the rising energy costs it costs too much for wi-fi all this fucking malarkey it's like nah bro you motherfuckers just didn't run that space properly and even that hotel what's that i forgot the hotel's name but there's a very famous hotel here that's in purple that everyone goes to sometimes i forgot i think i've, I've i think even i've been there myself it's a very very famous hotel next to it actually it's lit up in pink it's around here i think it's this one there that hotel as well is right next to it as well. So is it, that's what it's called. Is it something the, N how that's the how Hotel. That how Hotel, a lot of people from inter, international people go there. I've been there plenty of times with work back in the day. Like, look, it's across the across the river from the Universal Building. Shut up, man. The only reason why Worldscape didn't work because the people that run it are fucking inept. That's the real reason why. Like they ran it into the ground. They, they had a, a fucking prime location place with all this history tied to it great fucking interior amazing sound system and they fucking somehow manage to fuck it up that's on them no one else in my personal opinion but you know what do i bloody know what do i bloody know absolutely nothing let's see if they got any pictures on the inside here i'm going through some of the pictures here courtesy of the google mappings you see how it looks on the outside courtesy of the Berghain subreddit regarding how 
sad it was it closed but also a bit of a reality check about what it was like to kind of club in there this person posted on the Bergheim community subreddit kind of sad about Watergate but also it has lost any kind of reputation it once had I went there recently for an old comrade in London club scene and he played to an absolutely nobody downstairs they banged it out to a crowd of bros and tourists it's still it's still a spectacular location for a club and the sun rising over the river and warming the crowd through the windows still has its charm but the feel of the club was one of the stepping into the previous age despite its posh decor watergate feels cramped humid and even when full no up-and-coming DJ sees their reputation being made there. It runs on 2,000 legends who have outpriced the hit places. DJs and new generation can take or leave RIP, but the feeling of a space opening up new must be compelling. Exactly. I'm ambivalent about the forthcoming closure. This is something that I think, um, big up my girl Natalie Peak. This is what she mentioned in when she kind of blew up the spot and kind of exposed, which everybody kind of assumed was Watergate because she was working there previously. So she had a bad experience working at a very popular club in, Ber in Berlin. A lot of people guessed it was Watergate. And Natalie Peake said the same thing. She said it was basically stuck in its ways. The management were not really receptive to introducing new type of parties, new type of clientele, blah, -de blah, blah, blah. And effectively, that's what effectively cost them. You know, in the end, you'd imagine um, they couldn't really um, keep up with the times and over time, they paid the ultimate price. Let's go through some other responses here. It says it probably won't affect many people in the sub personally, but it's still an institution in Berlin club scene that lasted for almost a quarter of a century where most famous DJs had their first gigs and whatsoever. It's definitely sad and not a good sign overall. It, I think it is a good sign because a lot of clubs, even Fabric, bro. Fabric in London is fucking shit, personally. I think it's a terrible experience of a club. Obviously, functionally, it's great, but... I think Fabric has been able to survive this long because their management keep up with the times. They kind of made a shift in how they promote, made a shift in what kind of promoters they have in, what type of how, what type of collectors they let put, put let put events on there. Like it's actually they've actually been a bit more like forward thinking in terms of how they've kind of approached things and not just kind of stuck to their pigeonholed, minimal, deep house, tech house sort of vibe. And that's why they're still thriving and succeeding today. Honestly. Um, so I think it is possible. They just didn't really keep up with the times. That's my personal opinion, but I could be wrong. Another person says here, some people in this thread don't realize that clubbing world doesn't just revolve around Bergheim. Everyone who has a real passion for this music, the scene in Berlin's historical melting pot for the club culture, should be sad about Watergate closing. It's a historical institution for the city. Personally, the place wasn't for me, but I'm not blind to what it means for the scene in Berlin. Historical clubs are closing at an alarming rate, and Berlin is very quickly losing the soul of what made it a special place for, to, for for house techno and counterculture. Whilst it's still the most unique city in the world for clubs, it's definitely past its golden age and the future continues to prove that it's still this way due to useless government councils and money-hungry pieces of shit, aka real estate developers. That's true because somebody did mention most likely Watergate will remain empty for like two years up until they decide what to do with it or before the planning permission gets granted and work continues to rebuild or whatever to whatever Watergate is going to be rebuilt into. But let's also be honest and say the Watergate management have to take a lot of accountability for how they ran that space or how they refused to run that space and the fact that it kind of went to the point where now they have to close it. Because, you know, you'd imagine with the amount of foot traffic or the amount of, you know, people that kind of pass around there, the fact that they let this club get into a state of disrepute to disregard has in part due to their mismanagement. Yes, the rising rent costs are not great, uh, of course. I think they definitely have to look at that, especially as a government or whatever they do over there in Berlin and figure out a way to kind of limit the price hiking in rents and shit, especially when you can think about how much nightlife probably contributes to the overall, you know, GDP of fucking Berlin and shit. But you also have to take accountability that a lot of these clubs, especially if it's an institution the way it is, you know, you have to, if it's a historical institution, the people that are running it should probably be a little bit more considerate about how they run it and make sure that they keep the lights on them because they can't lose such a cultural to lose such a cultural institution is a bad look on the scene overall so the management should have been aware of that and not been so dismissive of maybe introducing or allowing new promoters to do new cool parties there and invite new people inside there and not be so fucking bigoted and homophobic or whatever else that they may have been that maybe have led to their kind of demise who knows it continues 
Um, haven't been there in a long time, this person says. Last time I went there was horrible, which was a long time before COVID, and it wasn't planning to go there again. Still, it just sucks. So many clubs are closing. Whether I like it or not, it's just not good. Of course, that was always been the case. But at the current speed of club closures, there soon won't be any left, and there's definitely not new ones popping up. That's definitely a, a problem. They've still got great clubs there, but you can see it's definitely following the same thing that's following in London. Loads of clubs are closing. Not many spots are opening up. If anything, I feel like Berlin is similar to London where there's way more like cocktail bars and restaurants opening as opposed to dedicated nightclubs. That's not really a thing anymore. Which obviously might even explain why fucking open ground is where it's at in Wuppertal. Who fucking knows? It continues. Another person here says, I went to Watergate first time in 2009. On weekends, it was very good. But I have never found... I've never fun memories of going there on Wednesdays had a very local good vibe oh so I, I have very good memories of going there on Wednesdays oh, okay I didn't know that was a thing um I was fresh in uni and my gang and me often stayed until Thursday morning 9 a.m at the closing only to have to take the walk of shame in the morning the U8 metro up to wedding where we lived back then of course we could not afford a taxi smelling like ashtray we were together with the commuters I even think of my first pill in the gate although I'm not totally sure about that very nice memories long long time ago yeah for sure I think the only place I get that sort of feeling midweek which I really do love to go to is that bar called Paloma that's one of my favorites that's one of my favorite hangout places and this place called same heads which i'm obviously going to cover in the next story about the attack on that person that happened there unfortunately to them but i think paloma and same heads are probably the places i go to to kind of repli replicate that sort of feeling midweek um of hanging out and shit but i'd imagine a lot of people there again i don't live there so who knows but i'd imagine a lot of people that probably live in berlin probably don't probably like to go to clubs anyway midweek They'll probably like to go to a bar or like a good restaurant, stay there after hours and shit, especially during the summer. You probably just stay out as long as possible. Maybe go to somebody's house and shit. Maybe grab some drinks at the fucking, what do you call it, spat cuff or whatever, maybe. But probably a nightclub midweek probably isn't the best place to go. You probably want to save that for the weekend. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm dumb. And that one says, Renate closing also. Yep, Renate also closed, I think, by the end of 2025. Not to be a doomer here, but between this, Mensch Mayer, blank, probably Renat closing and A1000 in Berlin will be a very different city in five years. The club culture is a huge magnifying lung international creatives coming in. And while so far, they've been able to be fine in nooks and crannies, even though there are like spaces to fill, and existing institutions are being priced out and there's nowhere else to go, really. That's very true. Very, very true what they mentioned there. Because if I'm not mistaken, isn't Club Oss meant to be closing soon too? Wasn't Club Austin like a temporary location? I swear it is. Club Austin is probably meant to be closing soon. Um, I think RSO is permanent, their location. So, you know, Trezor is there. But yeah, there's not a lot of places, isn't it, to go to? There's not really a lot of places. It's fucking, it's fucking sad. It really is fucking sad. Um, but big up Berlin. They're now struggling the same way we are struggling. We're keeping places open. Who would have funked it? Who would have funked it? Not me not fucking me.